Hey YouTube! Well, interesting thing has been happening recently, uh, just to let you guys know what's going on. Um, I posted at about 12 o'clock in the morning um, a forum post on the PSN forums called Yellow Light of Death is caused by low grade thermal paste. So those who are following me with YouTube, you guys know my whole views on it. I don't think I need to go over that. Probably I should, right? Well, the funny thing is it grew like wildfire. I mean, there's about 10 to 15 people um, that are on my side, and there's a few people here and there that come trying to attack my views, trying to put me down, blasting me for my spelling errors, which, for those who don't know, I'm one of the worst spellers, but I can read, like, um, I can read better than most people, and that if a word is misspelled, I can tell that it's misspelled, but I won't know how to spell it correctly. But if, let's say, you were to give me the this one word, let's say you were to give me um, coincidence, and you have it spelt four different ways, but one of the ways is correct, I will be able to pick it out every frickin' time. It's just that's how I'm a very strong reader. Um, so, of course, some people were saying, well, oh, yeah, you're a tech expert, but yet you can't spell honestly. Well, I, I said to them, well, at least I'm not an English major, but since when does uh, the inability to spell prevent you from repairing something? It doesn't. Um, and, of course, other people started attacking them. So all the people that were actually attacking my views have since gone away because they have no point. And they love to find every little, like, hole in anyone's story and try to, to attack it to try to say that you're wrong. Well... Believe it or not, um, so far this forum is at uh, 54 replies and this thing is red hot and a lot of people are, are watching it. Um, but it's funny is that um, I keep posting more proof uh, photos and stuff so I showed what ceramic base paste looks like. I even showed uh, pictures of um, temperature readouts on my laptop. Um, I used to have a problem with my laptop where if I was playing Burnout Paradise which is a, a very graphics demanding game um, I would run that and my my game frame rates would actually start dropping for no reason and then eventually would start resuming full speed and then quickly drop the frame rates again and it would keep doing it over and over again and I, I never understood why so I did a little test where I would use a program called speed fan and I ran it with a chart and I ran the game Sure enough, it showed that the game was hitting 80. The game was causing the processors to hit 85 degrees Celsius. So once it hit that point, the processors would actually downclock to um, lower the temps. And the moment it would hit a safe area of temperature, um, it would immediately uh, clock back to its normal speed, resume full uh, game speed, and then eventually overheat again, and then downclock again. Um, I saw this, I noticed this, that the, the temperatures were hitting 85 degrees Celsius on both the GPU and CPU. That's when it would downclock. Once it hit, once the GPU hit 80 degrees Celsius, it would kick back into full speed. Um, and the idle temperatures for the, um, the processors before I replaced with Arctic Silver, it was about, um, the GPU here shows uh, just under 60 degrees Celsius and the CPU was showing just above 50. So it was about 52 degrees Celsius for the CPU and 59 degrees Celsius for the GPU. After replacing it with Arctic Silver 5, the idle temperatures, get this, the GPU is 48 degrees Celsius and the CPU is 30, um, 37 degrees Celsius. That's at idle. And while I'm playing the game, I did the same thing with the game. The game would never slow down. It would never slow down whatsoever. And I took a look, and I was playing the game. I tried playing it for over 30 minutes, and it, I saw that the thing never hit above 75 degrees Celsius. So indicating that during a regular heavy gaming, it's, uh, it's less than uh, 10 degrees Celsius um, from its original point and that the game would run smoothly. And the moment I would turn off the game, um, the same thing you would notice is that the temperatures actually drop faster um, with the Arctic Silver than it did with ceramic, indicating that the temp it's able, to, the heat sink's able to withdraw more heat faster than ceramic-based paste. 
um, and I noticed that um, that the idle temperatures are perfect on this um, machine afterwards. Of course, someone decides, well, um, I'm going to attack your views and try to find every little hole in the story. He goes and says, this is a classic example of someone thinking they know something when they are wrong. Okay, so then he says, if you're going to compare two things, you have to test them in the same circumstances. You can't use a sample from six months ago in a computer and have it applied today. I beg to differ. The whole point of Arctic Silver 5 is the fact that it won't dry out like ceramic-based paste. So for it to continue working six months down the line indicates that my repair job was right, that my repair job still works, and that the paste is still, still sufficient to handle the heat demands. So how can he go and try to disprove me? Now this is coming from a gamer. A gamer isn't a tech expert. A gamer just pops in a disc and has fun. And this is exactly what he says. He says, um, furthermore, that information would be uh, detriminal, I don't know, to the public. Oh my god, my PS3 temperature is so hot. It's 10 degrees higher than my computer. Oh my god, it's going to fail. Oh my god, lawsuit. Oh my god, return. Oh my god. Then he goes to say that it's, uh, every CPU architecture is different. Look at some manufacturer information of CPUs over the years. Look for normal operating temperature. The number varies. And then he writes this. It's a freaking video game console. You put in a disc, you turn it on, and play a game. It's not a jet plane. This is also where he's wrong in his statement. He's saying, well, we shouldn't worry about it. Well, it's kind of hard not to worry about it when our machines are dying left and right. The point is, I decided to investigate, and I found the cause. And so far, a lot of people agree with me. Even people who never spoke about it before even said the same claims as me. So am I wrong, as well as everyone else? Or is it just these dumbasses who want to dis uh, defend a point that they have none? Um, so immediately, uh, one, one of these other guys, he's a really nice guy. Uh, he is Rod, Rod D76. He writes this. Um, the NES was a console. The PS3 is essentially a PC with all of its parts. Yes, it is. So then I write this, and that is when a PC repair technician like myself shines. The PS3 is a PC with all its parts. You're, you're spot on. With the PS3 and Xbox 360, it follows all the rules of PC repair minus the software. Because, you, you know, in PC repair, you also have to do software-related repairs. Um, but since they're closed environments on the PS3 and Xbox 360, you can't do that. But everything else is fair game. That's the whole reason why my analogy works. Because if it works on a computer, it's going to work on the PS3 because it's essentially the same thing. And of course, all these people that try attacking us, they, they throw one little jab and then they go running, hiding, and never speak anything again. Or sometimes they make it worse for themselves and state other claims that are bull. The point is, is that he was trying to disprove something when I'm trying to actually make a point. My point is, Arctic Silver 5 is essential and should be on every PS3. The fact that Sony was cheap and put ceramic-based paste on every PlayStation 3 system is the reason why we're having overheating issues, that the yellow light of death is prevalent now, and it's still growing at an alarming rate. For those who keep saying, oh, the PS3 doesn't get, uh, you know, it's not as bad as the red ring of death. If Sony doesn't change their attitude, it will be soon. And for those who keep saying, well, um, you know, when the PS3 came out the first year, there was no yellow light to death. Yes, because it took a while for the, art, for the uh, ceramic based paste to dry out. And once the ceramic based paste dries out, that's when your problems start. Because every PlayStation 3 that had an overheating issue, I fixed with thermal paste. So, um, you know, what more does uh, these uh, stupid people want to determine whether or not it is thermal paste. I gave them photo evidence, and someone else even gave them photo evidence from another PS3. I gave them chart graphs, which was from my computer. It's not this. It's not the same chart graphs that would have been possible on a PS3. I wish there was, but everything shows that the thermal paste is the culprit for these problems. And the thing is, is that my laptop has been running fine ever since I replaced the paste. Because, I mean, it's weird. Some people would normally say, oh, maybe your vents were clogged or your fan was uh, jammed or something. No. My fix for my laptop was one quick thing, replace the thermal paste. And that little thermal paste change, which some people are like, oh, thermal paste doesn't do anything. 
if thermal paste is able to lower your temperatures by 20 degrees plus Celsius, that's a big freaking difference. And that is something that must be changed.